Hey there, everybody. I'm your host, Casey Sutton, and you're listening to another edition of our In the Know with Lenovo commercial podcast. It's a series that's sponsored by our good buddies over at Microsoft. So I know you're all wondering what our theme for today's episode is going to be, and it's all about AEC, m and and U. Now, I know that sounds like I just spit a bunch of letters at you from the alphabet, but trust me, those letters are your ticket to reaching customers who really need that extra oomph, that robust get up and go to get their job done. We're talking a lot about the people that are in architecture, engineering, construction, media and entertainment, and of course, all things design related. So Lenovo offers a whole host of products designed specifically for those folks to handle those intense rendering tasks. Joining us today are two subject matter experts, two of the best. We've got Chris Rufo. He's our worldwide segment manager for architecture, engineering, and product development. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing great. Thanks, Casey. Great to be back. Yeah, good. We're really glad to have you. And then we've also got Rob Hoffman. Now, Rob is our senior worldwide industry manager for media and entertainment specifically. How about you, Rob? How's it going? Everything's going great. Thanks for having me today. Good. We're really excited that you could be here. Now, they're going to be providing a lot of great insight today on how to really position Lenovo's products and services for customers that are in those industries. So we're really glad that you guys are going to kind of Give us a great idea about how to tap into those specific users and position Lenovo in a way that's valuable. So on that note, I'm just going to go ahead and and start with you, Chris. Um, When we're talking about AEC, Architecture, Engineering, Construction, what are some of the modern Lenovo devices that our customers are going to be really excited about? The ones that we're going to mention and we're going to see their eyebrows raise and and they're just going to get pretty pumped. Excellent. Thanks, Casey. Well, let's start with the ThinkPad lineup. Personally, I love the P1 G2. We launched at Next Build in London in June, and I think the P1 is particularly important for the AEC sector. It's the Goldilocks of the ThinkPad lineup for architecture and engineering users. It has that ideal balance of ergonomics. It's thin and light, fashionable, but powerful enough to run the main ISV applications like Revit and SolidWorks. Anyone who needs to move from their desktop to the boardroom to their clients is going to love the P1. And then uh, stepping up, we have the new ThinkPad P53. It was also launched at Next Build, and it's a completely different beast. It's, it's, a, it's a triple threat. It's got great processor capabilities, great graphics, and a form factor that will allow you to have desktop power. It, it's the most powerful 15 inch on the planet it can take an nvidia quadro rtx 4000 or 5000 couple that with the latest xeon processors and you've got desktop power in a mobile package um, and at next build we partnered with a customer called neoscape they're a boutique arc Fizz agency specializing in cinematic films for the real estate sector in fact they've got a little bit of me- media and entertainment in what they do Uh, They showed a new real-time demo based on a Foster & Partners building in New York. They used the Unreal Engine, which is, you know, a tool that Rob's customers are very familiar with uh, to create a spectacular real-time walkthrough. The key word here is real-time. And because of the RTX 5000 graphics card, it's so powerful, Neoscape could run UE in real-time with global illumination turned on. The visual fidelity was absolutely stunning. Uh, the user can change subtle lighting effects, HDR environments, etc., and see the results in real time. Uh, no more waiting for a render farm. Uh, it's worth noting that the RTX 4000 and 5000 equipped P53 is perfect for VR workflows. Basically, we've crunched the power of 17-inch into a 15-inch format. And uh, Rob's going to talk a little bit more about the specs uh, in a moment in his segment. But I also wanted to touch on the new P43S, which is the latest addition to the ThinkPad lineup. It's a great solution and it looks stunning, especially with the, the new WQHD Dolby Vision HDR display. I know that's a mouthful, but it's, it's really cool. This one's going to really appeal to users who do light duty CAD work, uh, particularly STEM and education and those who really need to run CAD applications in the smallest format for a workstation. So I know that our AEC customers for a long time have been really pumped about the portfolio, but 
I mean, P1 is something that's been a game changer for me in my territory just because it is so thin and light. I know folks are really excited about just how much additional GPU power they're getting with the P53. And I'm honestly, I've been a little surprised by how many people were really excited to see that we brought a 14 inch back into the mobile workstation portfolio. And again, I, I'm seeing it work really well in the AEC um, kind of sectors. But Rob, why don't you take us a little bit through the media and entertainment side of it? I think we've always expected architecture and engineering to be workstation users. But, you know, tell us where media and entertainment sees these fitting into into their workflows and how it's going to be good options for them. Will do. Um Things are really evolving in the media and entertainment industry, where traditionally it's been the realm of desktop um, workstations, where now we're seeing a lot more artists on the go. Um, They need to be able to work remote. They need to be able to work on set. So we're seeing this shift over to more powerful mobile workstations. And now with, you know, new offerings like the Gen 2 P1 uh, ThinkPad, as well as the new P53 ThinkPad, we're really able to advance the art on the go, for lack of a better way of putting it. So let's start off with the P1 Gen 2. And really what this is, is a perfect workstation for freelance artists or those that are on the go, that need the convenience of a thin and light mobile workstation that delivers just the right amount of power to be able to run 3D animation applications like Autodesk Maya, Autodesk 3ds Max, maybe even Houdini. Um, But in addition to those 3D apps, they also need to be able to run some of the Adobe-based Creative Cloud um, tool sets as well, and then do administrative types of tasks while they're on the road, you know, your typical Microsoft Office, PowerPoint. Just because they're artists, they're not excluded from having to do the, uh, the mundane tasks that all of us have to do from time to time as well. It's really, uh, uh, I mean, the best way to look at it is it's almost like a lifestyle type of, of a solution where it does have a beautiful sleek design. It's small, it's compact, but it really packs a lot of power with the latest NVIDIA GPU offerings as well as the latest offerings from Intel um, uh, as far as the Xeon processors are concerned. So we've got that on one side, but then when we're looking at the, on, on the other hand, where we have the P53. And as Chris had mentioned, this was recently announced. So this is new news, and this is the most powerful 15-inch mobile workstation on the market today. And really what this solution is best suited for is for that artist that's on the go, working on location, but they really require an office-like desktop capability, anytime, anywhere, for any reason. And P53 is perfect for these individuals because it is really well suited for advanced 3D animation types of of workflows or video editing or creative finishing applications. Touching a little bit upon what Chris was talking about, the P53 can come with Quadro RTX 5000 graphics. You can have up to 128 gigs of RAM and your choice of either an i5, i7, i9, or Xeon processor and up to six terabytes of M.2 PCIe storage, and top that off with a 4K multi-touch OLED display, basically the P53 is a no-compromise mobile solution with desktop capabilities. These capabilities also lend not only this machine to do you know, content creation work, but also be able to have the power to run very professional, very complex applications and experiences that pertain to AR and VR types of of workflows. Okay, guys, so I'm I'm usually pretty open about the fact that I'm biased. And when it comes to this new lineup of the mobile portfolio on the workstation side, my favorite child, personally, because I have one, is the P1 Gen 2. I mean, that thing is just bad to the bone. I love the carbon fiber weave top. It, it's just great. A lot of the folks on my team are really excited that we're back in the 14-inch space for the P43S. And I can tell that my own workstation overlay, he's most pumped about the P53 and what it brings to the table. So I kind of want to zero in on that one for a second. From the workstation perspective, where do you think is the one mobile uh, option that has the most opportunity for us to go into business. It's definitely the the uh, P53. It's the world's most powerful 15 inch. Uh, 
we stand alone. It's the, it's the only professional workstation that's capable of taking an, uh, an NVIDIA Quadro RTX 4000 or 5000 graphics card. And when you couple that with a high-end Intel Xeon processor or Core i processor, uh, you have a mobile package that, that stands alone. It's desktop power in a mobile format, uh, and it enables our customers to do things that they couldn't do in the past um, you know it's it's a no-brainer for them if they're on a tight deadline going to the clients they can make critical changes in the cab on the way to the clients and go in with confidence knowing that uh, what the the change that they made is is going to be done in time so we have a real opportunity right now we stand alone in the marketplace neither Dell or HP have a 15-inch mobile in their lineup that can work with a Quadro RTX 4000 or 5000 card. It's a great opportunity for us to go and take uh, market share in the mobile space in both architecture, engineering, construction, and product development. So we've been talking about P53, and it's been, you know, it's we're touting it and everybody else's as the most powerful 15-inch mobile workstation on the market. And, um, you know, I've got a really good story for you where just here at SIGGRAPH not too long ago, our friends at Autodesk, they were doing main stage demos of their Flame software on a, on a Lenovo ThinkPad P53. This has traditionally only been the realm of heavy iron. So your desktop, dual socket, multi-core, huge amounts of RAM workstations, and they have the confidence in our new solution where they were showing it publicly for the first time ever on a 15-inch mobile. And that's been unheard of up until this day. So what I'm hearing over and over again about P53 is we have an opportunity to find places where the competition is sitting warm and and fuzzy, not only with a 17-inch mobile workstation that we can now go compete against, But we can even go and start taking away some of their desktop share and saying, look, for the first time, you can actually get up and go with a 15-inch device. Is that fair? Absolutely. That's very fair. So that's what I really love about the P53 is I feel like you're exactly right. It's given more people than ever in the media and entertainment industry the ability to not be tied to the desk and get probably the the mobility that they've been craving. But you mentioned earlier that media and entertainment has always really been kind of a powerhouse when it comes to the desktop and and tower portfolio. So I'm curious, are we still going to see some of our desktop tower workstations play big in this media entertainment area? Oh, absolutely. Um, You know, with P53 and its amazing capabilities, what it's going to do is it's going to be an addition to, in many cases, that desktop solution that many of the artists are using. So it's in, in many cases, it's not you're going to choose one or the other. So you're going to have a desktop or a mobile. In many cases, artists will have both and they'll have multiple machines. So desktops are are probably the lion's share of of workstation technology that we're selling into the media and entertainment industry. And there are two particular models that I want to um, focus on in particular. The first is the P520. This is your mainstay workstation. This is the backbone of the bulk of the production pipelines out there today. And it's best suited for 3D animation, editing, compositing workflows, When it's powered by a multi-core Intel Xeon processor or NVIDIA Quadro RTX technology or even GeForce GPUs, there is also, on top of that, the need on the the part of the artist to be able to have um, a lot of storage, whether it's having access to a lot of RAM or a lot of internal storage for content creation within the machine. And the P520 is really able to deliver that. This system really is the workhorse of the, of the workstation component of the media and entertainment industry. In addition to that, it too, like the P53, being that it's got a lot of capabilities, powerful graphics, powerful processing with the CPU and the GPU, plenty of RAM, plenty of storage, and plenty of capability as a whole, it too is perfect for your AR, VR applications and experiences just due to its overall capabilities. So then when we're moving away from, you know, this workhorse, you know, which which is the single socket offering, 
We're then moving over to the P920. That is the other bookend to um, the the desktop portfolio that's really applicable for the media and entertainment industry. And the P920 is a no compromise desktop workstation. And this too is the standard. It is the backbone for advanced creative finishing, compositing, editing, color grading workflows. As mentioned, it's got a dual socket multi-core Xeon processor. So you have the ability to choose whatever processor is best suited for the applications or, or production function that the artist is wanting to accomplish. So something with a very small number of cores but very high frequency or processors with a ton of cores. It's just, it's all relative and it really is dependent upon what is the artist using as their primary toolkit. The machine has the ability to house up to two Quadro RTX 8000 GPUs, up to two terabytes of RAM, and space for up to 12 hard drives and eight PCIe slots that are in many cases required for a lot of the third-party components to build out some of these more advanced workstations or advanced um, art creation solutions. Equally as important is that it has a power supply that's capable of being able to drive that experience for the artist. 1400 watt power supply makes everything work effortlessly and seamlessly. Not only is the, the P920 perfect for content creation, but it's very well suited for client AI um, development. So the way you kind of want to look at this is sandbox development. So basically data scientists can more economically build out and test their solutions right there on their desk before they do a larger deployment that could be very costly either to a data center or to their internal cloud or an external cloud. Well, tell me this if you can. I mean, you know, when you're sitting down and you're talking to the folks in those industries, those decision makers, everything you mentioned, the speeds, the feeds, the, the power, all that's really, really important to them. But I think where I struggle, and I think maybe a lot of my peers do as well, is we are not necessarily as technical. So, you know, to just go in and say, hey, you can use this for content creation, that's great. But that that doesn't mean as much to me. So are you able to kind of give us an idea of how are we seeing this realized? You know, if I'm watching TV, what's an example of something that is being created using a machine that's got this kind of punch and power packed into it? Absolutely. So um, let's, let's talk about two specific things, 3D animation, and then we'll talk about creative finishing. So on the 3D animation side, you watch an Avengers movie. The Incredible Hulk, that's not a, a person in a, you know, a big bodybuilder with green paint on him like Lou Ferrigno back in the day. That is, that is a computer-generated character, completely synthetic, where they might have a character that they're using as a reference, an actor. But what they're doing is they're building that individual digitally within the desktop, within the workstation, and then it's going out to the big screen. So that's really, you know, if you want to kind of put things in the context as to, you know, what what's actually being done, what's being delivered, it's really that, you know, content that either is impossible to make just because we don't have, you know, guys in flying suits like Iron Man, or we do not have these large aliens. I mean, those have to be done digitally, and that's what's being created. But then when you look at the flip side of it, is the creative finishing side, and that encompasses a lot of things, where it it's you know it can be something like editing the project together, where basically you have the director sitting in a room where you've got the artist that's sitting in front of their P920, and the director is saying, no, 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 I want I want uh, the this other clip where Hulk is picking up this you know pulling this fire hydrant out of the ground or or something else to make the storyline um, a lot more cohesive and make things um, a lot cleaner and a, a much better visual experience. Or you have things like um, color grading. And that's one of the big things, and that's one of those subtle effects where a lot of the, the, the audience or consumer, for lack of a better way of putting it, never really notices these things. So next time you're watching like a television series or even more importantly a commercial, what you'll notice is that when it's like um, for you know a piece of jewelry or a car or some type of a luxury item, 
you'll see the rest of the screen kind of get a little bit blurry or get a little bit darker, but you'll see that hero object really pop out on the screen. That's what color grading is, where what it does is it, in a very subtle way, takes the, the viewer's eye to exactly where the director wants you to put it within that particular frame. On top of that, I'm sure we've all seen movies or television series where it's nighttime out. Well, nighttime is not the best time to be able to film projects. So what artists can do is be able to take a shot that was um, done during the middle of the day and basically grade it to where it looks like it was shot at night. So it's really the ability to go through and make the impossible possible, for lack of a better way of putting it. See, I love this. This is the kind of thing I love hearing because I think especially when we're talking about workstations, as sellers, we understand that our normal decision maker maybe isn't always the person that is buying when it comes to workstations. They have very specialized groups that have these needs. And just being able to understand how they're using them helps me understand the questions I need to ask of my normal contacts so that they can say, oh, you know what? Well, we don't have a need for that. But, you know, Todd over in XYZ department is doing that kind of thing. Let me introduce you. And so that was actually super useful. And I appreciate that. I, I think the other thing that we always need more of in this space is you know, now we understand what the new products are and the ones that are really going to be the highlights this year. But I always struggle to know where our products land in comparison to our competitors. So can you guys can give me an idea of what are the things we should be pointing out where we win versus the competition with these new products? Excellent. I'll jump in here, Casey. Uh, we've already talked about some product things. The P53 is the 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 world's most important 15-inch mobile with the RTX 4000 and 5000. And it's the only professional workstation uh, that is capable of taking those cards, and it's a huge differentiator for us, and we, we should let that shine wherever uh, wherever we can. It's critically important to the uh, AEC and manufacturing sector, and I'll talk about why in just a little bit, but let me touch on some other things that set us up, uh, set us apart. Uh, the first thing to note is that uh, all Lenovo workstations are certified to run the major ISV applications. Uh, so users can buy with confidence that knowing that their their workstation is going to work and run smoothly with the application they need to run. And this is true for AEC, for manufacturing, media and entertainment, healthcare, oil and gas, all of the industry sectors. Uh, we have the top ISV applications that we certify. Uh, the other thing that we do that makes our hardware stand out against the competition is the overall attention to engineering detail, like, you know, designed by engineers, for engineers, with engineering in mind. If we look at everything from our advanced cooling techniques to toolless access to the flexible bay front on the uh, desktop models, not to mention all the mil spec testing that's done on the ThinkPad lineup. Uh, you know, we, we test uh, 12 different spec methods and 22 different procedures to ensure that the ThinkPads can handle any environmental hazards. I mean, who would have thought we actually grow mold on the motherboard to make sure that our ThinkPads work in extreme conditions? But we do, uh, so uh, customers can buy with confidence. Uh, on the software side, it's worth calling out the Lenovo Performance Tutor. And this is a big competitive advantage for us. Uh, LPT helps ensure customers get the most out of their investment. It's a free software uh, tool. And basically what it does is it adjusts system resources to optimize performance and user experience. It's an easy, all-in-one, easy-to-access tool. And the latest version has been optimized to support enterprise-level deployment. And last but not least, it's worth pointing out the new TBR study that shows Lenovo workstations are 20% more reliable than the competition over the first three years. And Lenovo was the only vendor uh, below the industry average for all three years. So this is hugely important. I mean, Rob, I'm sure you've got some other points you want to add as well. Yeah, well, I mean, Chris, you really summed it up well, where regardless of whether an artist or production facility or studio is working in AEC or media and entertainment, they really don't have any downtime, any time for downtime. 
and reliability is extremely important just because having a system offline can heavily impact the projects and that studio or artist's ability to be able to deliver them on time and on budget. So whether you know it's the rigorous testing to ensure that the machines are going to deliver the performance expected by the artist, or whether it's the qualification work that, that Chris had mentioned as well. But to add on to that just a little bit, many of, the, many of these um, software and hardware partners that we're working with, they're not only just testing our machines and qualifying them, they're also using them to develop those solutions on their side. So it starts from, goes all the way from development to testing and qualification to the, to the artist using them all on Lenovo workstations. And then kind of going back to a little bit of what Chris was talking about with the software solutions, a lot of the software solutions, whether it is the LPT performance tuner, being able to set up those profiles to allow artists to maximize the experience in front of their machine when they're working on it. Because believe it or not, the most expensive part of production is not the workstation that's sitting in front of them. It's the, t- it's the salary that's being paid to the artist. And if the production studio can boost their productivity, they're getting a much greater return on their overall investment. So making that artist as productive as possible is the key investment that many studios want to make. On top of that, you know, hardware, nothing is infallible. So there are times where you might run into an anomaly or the artist might when they're working on their project. Well, we have a beautiful diagnostics uh, tool set that allows the artist or their IT professional or associate to be able to quickly come in, diagnose a problem, be able to make the appropriate you know, resolution to it so that artist can get back up and running as soon as humanly possible. Then, you know, last but surely not least, you know, with our partnership with the folks over at Microsoft, all of the Lenovo workstations come fully loaded with productivity boosting support of Windows 10 Pro with features like remote desktop, Windows Autopilot, and BitLocker. So what it really does is it helps your customers be able to get more done easier and safer than ever. Now, yeah, those are all excellent points. And I think several of them are things that your Lenovo, your average Lenovo seller, knows really well and we always include in the story. I think one place where at least I know I'm a little less comfortable and it's something you guys just brought up multiple times and that's with the ISVs. You know, I understand what uh, an ISV is and why it's important. I think where I lack some knowledge is really understanding which key players, which key softwares align to which industry. So is that something you can help break down for me? You know, if I'm sitting down with an organization that might have some some key folks working in architecture, engineering, construction, what are the most common applications that I should be saying, hey, do you have anybody using fill in the blank here? Chris, can you help me fill in the blank on the AEC side of things? Absolutely. So, you know, we talked about use cases earlier. I'll give you a little bit more local color on the ISVs. But first, uh, Casey did a great job kind of summarizing the overall industry. When we talk about architecture and engineering internally as a broad category, it's really two industries for Lenovo, encompassing both architecture, engineering, and construction, as well as the product development sector, which is uh, more broader than manufacturing space. So in the AEC space, Revit is the primary application. You're going to hear about Revit and AutoCAD. Um, They're both developed by a company named Autodesk. There are many other solutions, but Revit and AutoCAD are the two primary ones. Every, uh, Every architect in the world is going to have one of those two applications on their desktop. And there are a few other things as well that they're they're going to have. But if you can remember those two, you're off to a great start. What are they doing inside of AutoCAD and, and Revit? What does that workflow look like? If I'm an architect, what does my date look like? Where does the project start and, and end? Most uh, are working inside of Revit, which is a 3D uh, modeling application for something called BIM, or Building Information Modeling. And this is where the architect can work with the entire project ecosystem and create a 3D model of the building or structure or infrastructure they're working on. 
uh, and share that across the team. It's a 3D modeling solution that allows them to do everything from their design work to visualization, all in a single package, uh, and explore what that project is going to look like before shovel hits the ground. Helps with coordination, helps with analysis, simulation, documentation, scheduling. It's all built in. AutoCAD has been part of the industry for so long, uh, it's primarily used as a 2D uh, documentation tool. So when you think of the classic uh, image of an architect with plans rolled out on, on a, a desktop, uh, those 2D plans are often done uh, in AutoCAD itself. So just the way you say that makes me think AutoCAD maybe lands at our more entry level those entry points of our workstation portfolio. So what are, just off the top of your head, what are some good devices that tend to, to be an obvious choice for AutoCAD? The P43S, the P, all of the solutions that we talked about today uh, will run AutoCAD brilliantly. But um, the if an architect is focusing usually solely on AutoCAD, uh, the P43S and up will be a, a great solution for them. Revit requires a little bit more horsepower, particularly on the graphics side. And, you know, the T2000 that's in the P1 and up is a great solution to run Revit smoothly all day long. And the one thing that we have to remember here about CAD apps is they thrive on high clock speed. So bigger isn't necessarily always better when it comes to a CAD application. You want the processor that has the highest clock speed. Um, that's going to enable the CAD application to run as smoothly as possible, and it's going to allow the user to unlock as much power as possible from the graphics card. Um, jumping over to the product development side, the top software application is SolidWorks. It's a, it's a household name in manufacturing. You'll also hear of more advanced tools like Katia, NX, uh, Creo. The SolidWorks application is pretty much used for to design just about anything from you know widgets to consumer products to um, you know escalators, elevators, etc. It's the best general purpose solid modeling application. Some of the other applications we talked about, uh, CATIA, NX, etc., they are used by a lot of the high-end automotive, aerospace uh, uh, industries as the de facto standard for the engineering of their products. Uh, and then there's a host of visualization tools that support uh, both, both industries. But again, remember, CAD applications require high clock speed. There's a suite of tools uh, that get into niche applications in manufacturing that do what we call multi-physics, which is the simulation and analysis of various types of um, effects. So think of computational fluid dynamics, metal stress testing, uh, etc. Those applications require a different set of requirements for workstations. They require uh, multi-core processors. They're very, very processor intensive, and many of them take advantage of both the processor and the uh, GPU as well. So as Rob talked about earlier, the P920, the dual socket machines with a high-end uh, NVIDIA Quadro uh, GV or GP100 is the standard for those types of multi-physics uh, workflows. But the other thing I wanted to touch on is that the vast majority of users in both architecture, engineering, construction, as well as product development, the ones who are doing the day-to-day -day design work, modeling work, uh, they're working on mobiles. In fact, we sell four times as many mobiles to desktops in the AEC sector and twice as many in manufacturing. This is in North America. It, it varies from geo to geo. But the, the world is becoming more mobile. And as such, these firms have greater demands placed on their employees. They're expected to move fluidly from their project team at their desktop to the boardroom, to the client office, to the job site, and even work from home. 
And having the right mobile configuration can help you win the deal. And in fact, uh, true story, I was just on the phone with a major automotive OEM yesterday, and I talked to a, a large uh, AEC firm uh, about a week ago, and both of them said the same thing. You know, having the right mobile configuration helps them with job retention. We're in a very highly competitive market, and the right tool can attack, uh, attract the right talent and help them retain them. So I think it's critically important. All right, Rob. So Chris had his at bat to tell us about the ISVs that are really driving the industry on the AEC and product development side. What are the big names that we should be listening for and proactively asking our customers about when it comes to media and entertainment? Well, this is really easy, Casey. Um, As Chris had mentioned, Autodesk is one of the really large players on the AEC side. Well, guess what? Autodesk is a really big player on the media and entertainment side as it relates to 3D animation software. So the bulk, probably 95% of the 3D animation seats that are out there for modeling, animation, rendering, are typically Autodesk 3ds Max or Autodesk Maya. On the editing side, it's Adobe Premiere Pro or Avid uh, Media Composer. And then when you're talking about the high-end creative finishing type of applications, you're talking about Autodesk for their Flame software, and you're looking at Blackmagic Design for their Resolve solution. No, I love that. And again, I, I can't stress enough from my perspective as a seller, really hearing these use cases, what the the softwares are, where we think certain products are, are winning us new business. It's invaluable because, again... We want to go in and be a trusted advisor, but this is a space where it helps to be a little bit more technical. So just being able to come in and have some sort of credibility, know the applications they're using, when they're using them, and how they're using them, really gives you that that shred of value and credibility to help move the conversation forward. So I think that's fantastic. Um, kind of in the same vein, I'm really curious, Rob. I think it's been very clear to everyone at Lenovo for a couple of years that we have double down on investing in workstation and it's all about winning new business you know where have you seen us be effective where have you seen kind of a good setup that resulted in we we won a new logo and they're a happy workstation customer when it comes to the media and entertainment side a great example of this would be that we've recently won a large multinational production facility that works predominantly in creating blockbuster type films, whether it's your superhero type of franchise or your fully animated feature CG film project. And this facility was with a Lenovo competitor for a very, very, very long time. And um, as I'm sure everybody on, on that's listening into this podcast has experienced in the past is when there's been a long time incumbent in place. It's very, very, very difficult to unseed them. But over time and, you know, the diligence of the sales team, the account, you know, after, after a while realized what the value to switching Lenovo would be and the benefits to both their business in the short term and long term could potentially be. And while it was, you know, your, your, your typical sales, you know, activities where it's the diligence and keeping in contact and and nurturing. There is also a component of, as you'd mentioned, Casey, having that credibility, being able to have that discussion with the artist and the production facility and their IT people where they understand the challenges that that they're facing, whether it's technical or artistic or potentially business. So I'm curious, you know, Outside of the sellers, like you mentioned, nurturing, being dedicated, sticking with the account and kind of not giving up, what else outside of that was the secret sauce? What was the recipe that made them ultimately decide, yes, this is going to be the right move? So the secret sauce on top of the the diligence of the sales organization really has to do with the overall breadth and depth of the Lenovo portfolio. Whether it's the ThinkPad or ThinkStation lineup, where there is a solution that's tailored for every single production function within the overall production facility. And it's not just 
the breadth and depth of the portfolio within the workstation side of the business. It's also the breadth and depth of the solutions on the DCG side of the business, because in many cases, these two groups have to come together to be able to fully support the requirements of that production facility. On top of that, I mean, as we'd mentioned earlier, and Chris very eloquently, you know, put it up, we have a very elegant solution, whether it's the chassis design where it's toolless or the hardware testing or the mill spec testing. Um, you know, people have grown to, to, you know, understand and expect a certain level of quality out of Lenovo workstations that is at a much higher standard than that of anything else in the industry. So that's also one of the huge things that pushes that customer decision. On top of that, there are, in certain cases, we'll bring in certain customers into our Lenovo Advisory Council. So that way they can get an insight into what are our thoughts on the progression of the workstation portfolio moving forward, but also allowing them the opportunity to be able to feed back into that development process by providing, you know, realistic, real-time input on development decisions that we're thinking about making. So in many cases, a lot of what we're selling today has been heavily, heavily influenced and, and impacted by the customers that are part of these councils. Um, just having a little bit of knowledge. You don't have to be a media and entertainment expert to be able to have these discussions, but a little knowledge goes a long way. And that's what the, what's the artist or production facility is looking for is somebody that's going to listen to them, but somebody that can, you know, provide a solution greater than that of just the hardware itself. All right. I love this, guys. And, and we're coming kind of towards the end, and everyone knows I like to boil it down. So I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Um, Chris, you first. What do you think is just the one biggest takeaway you want the sellers out there to know in order to go out there and effectively position and sell our workstation portfolio within the architecture, engineering, um, construction, and product development space? We want everybody to know that we have the right portfolio and the right team to support them regardless of what their uh, workflows are. They can purchase with uh, with confidence knowing that our solutions are ISV certified for the major CAD applications. Um, we want them to remember that for the right workflows in architecture, engineering, construction, and product development, we have the right tool to support them. The key tools to remember for the average uh, architect or designer, the P1 or the P53 is going to be paramount for those who require mobility. Uh, the P520 is the uh, perfect middle-of-the-road desktop machine. It's the Goldilocks machine on the desktop side for those who need a little bit more power, uh, who do multiple ta uh, tasks, visualization as well as uh, design and that we can scale up to the high end for those who have requirements of simulation and analysis on the product side, as well as uh, those who want a sandbox for client AI workflows with a P920. That coupled with our best in class uh, support offering, our customer solutions team, the fact that we have software that supports from diagnostics to LPT, we've got the, the full package uh, and the right solution for any workflow and any need. Well, that was that was more than one, but I'm going to give you a free pass on it because they were all good ones. So uh, <laughs> high five. That was an excellent summary. Rob, is there anything you want to add to that? It's just the what you think is the key takeaway and what sellers really need to know in order to go out there and accelerate this business further within media and entertainment. Absolutely. Um, you know, as Chris said, it's about the breadth and depth of the portfolio. Regardless of what a studio is trying to accomplish or the tool sets that they're using within it, we've got the right solution that will fit you know, perfectly within their production. The next area would be, these are systems that have been rigorously tested in production. They've already you know, proven themselves time and time again, and they're gonna be able to deliver on that expectation. Lastly, these are machines that not only have, have been tested in production, but are also being extensively tested by the tools providers that 
um, many of the artists and production facilities are working with day in and day out, whether it's the Autodesks of the world, the Avids, the Black Magic designs of the world. All of our solutions have been tested extensively. So basically what you see is what you get. And the, and the best thing about it is it's an uneventful experience. That's what we're ultimately wanting to provide for the artists and production facilities when they're using our, our solutions is it was nothing that was memorable. Because if it was not memorable, that means they were actually able to do their work and focus on the art itself and not the tools behind it. I actually, I love that. That's a really cool way to put it. In this scenario, you want it to be uneventful. What you see is what you get. What you get is good. And so go forth and do the job, right? You said it. All right, guys, you know the drill. When it comes to really digging in and finding more information about the products we talked through today, data sheets, just figuring out the speeds and feeds, find it should always be your first stop. And of course, your workstation overlays are excellent resources that I think, you know, you should try to drag them into every single meeting and and every conversation you're having. But, you know, I got to say, guys, what if these folks have questions that are really more specific to these industries? What if they really want to try to talk to someone subject matter expert wise about architecture, engineering, media, entertainment, product development, construction? Where should they go? So for those of you that are listening to this podcast, should you ever have a question around media and entertainment or need assistance in working with one of your customers or prospects, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can email me at rhoffman, and that's two Fs and two Ns, at lenovo.com. And anything I can do to help you or incite any you know additional wisdom on you, Um, that's what I'm here for. It's my job. So anything I can do to help you out, I'm here to do it. Yeah, same for architecture and engineering. And don't forget to check out our sales playbooks on the vault. There's one for each industry, and these can help answer some major questions that you may have about the industry. And I can help you fill in the gaps. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I can't tell you how much we appreciate you not only helping us understand what the portfolio looks like today, but really taking a look under the hood of where these products fit into these industries so we can really start engaging our customers in a super meaningful way. And as always, we've got to throw another big shout out to our sponsors over at Microsoft for continuing to support our commercial podcast series. For those of you listening, make sure you stay tuned for the next episode in our In the Know series. And of course, don't forget, you can always go check out the old episodes by visiting our In the Know YouTube podcast channel. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next time.